For Marshall, independence was crucial, of course, but equality was a central value going forward. Um, he must have seen his ideas in Kenyatta, who, once he was released, had all of this rhetoric about the protection of, um, of individual rights. Um, uh, but as Africans took power, Kenyatta's central concerns were not minority rights. There were sovereignty and independence from Britain. They were about national unity, creating a country out of something that had never been a country before, right? The borders of Kenya were drawn by colonial powers when they divided up Africa. Um, in July 1963, at the end of their first day in Kenya, Marshall and Bernhard attended a reception and dinner in their honor at the home of Tom Goya, who now held a cabinet post. He was like, sort of like in the Justice Department for us uh, in the new government. Bernhard recalled, about halfway through the cocktail hour, uh, Thurgood got a hold of Kenyatta and said, um, Jomo, what the hell are you doing? Um, I spent all my time busting tail in that wet place in London. He was always complaining about the weather and about the beer. Um, a busting tail in that wet place in London writing a constitution for you with a bill of rights. And you don't go around taking people's property away without due process of law. And I've only been here one afternoon and what's the first thing I see? You're beginning to make it impossible for Indians and Pakistanis to stay in Kenya and operate their businesses. What are you going to do about it? Bernhard described Kenyatta as a very impressive man, very cool, very elderly. He responded to Marshall. We're looking into all of these. Marshall interrupted. No, it's not looking into. It's doing something about it. Will you get Tom over here? So Mboya came over. This is, um, I'm quoting Bernhard here. Mboya came over, and Thurgood was saying, your responsibility is to see that despite what the prime minister wants to happen, that we're going to protect property rights in this country. Uh, Tom Mboya said, well, we're going to do that, judge. And Marshall cut in. You're not doing it. Bernhard was taken aback. Never in diplomatic history, he thought to himself, has an American treated another nation's head of state this way. Uh, but he's, he kept stressing they loved their good. Um, so, so Marshall had this relationship with them where he could yell at them, you know, tease them, and they'd sort of hug and kiss at the end of the day. It was really quite extraordinary. Um, African Americans and other African nations um, sometimes found themselves at odds with their hosts. And Kevin tells the story of Pauline Murray in Ghana. Um, and I'm going to skip uh, ahead a little bit, but um, Murray's efforts to, uh, to uh, argue in favor of American constitutionalism in Ghana get her into trouble. Um, Marshall does the same, on some level, the same thing, you know, defending the American image in Kenya, um, and is instead celebrated for it. Now, there are many reasons for the differences. Um, but one of them is foreign affairs. Uh, the Ghana Ghanaian government, of course, is critical of the U.S. role in Africa. In Kenya, the nationalists are hoping to develop a positive relationship with the U.S. They want U.S. economic aid, which they end up getting. Um, Marshall's trip to Kenya engaged his life passion, equality um, under law, and what he saw in 1963 enraged him. The greatest puzzle, one of the great puzzles anyway in the story, is that this episode didn't diminish his utter joy in returning to Kenya in, in December 63, one of the only uh, foreigners whose way was paid, fully paid by the um, Kenya, new Kenya government to their independence ceremonies. Um, uh, Marshall's affection for Kenyatta was genuine, and yet Kenyatta was focused less on rights than on consolidating power to make a nation. Uh, right after independence, when the Constitution stood in his way, uh, he would be quick to cast it aside. Uh, Bernhard thought that Marshall attributed more goodness across the board to Kenyatta than I had ever read or heard was appropriate. The reason seemed to be his focus on the task at hand, bringing a subject people to independence. Bernhard told Marshall, this guy's not all clean. And Marshall said, what do you expect? Bernhard told me. He wanted to protect that freedom, period, and he didn't want to hear a lot of carping about the method. Um, in the book, I talked about the comparison between you know, Marshall's willingness to overlook uh, deficiencies in, among Kenya's founders um, and, and, and contrast that with his sort of vis, uh, visceral attack on uh, the American founders 
during the bicentennial of the Constitution um, in, in 1986, which is a sort of an interesting um, contradi uh, contradiction um, or, or con contrast. Marshall was, of course, not the only American at Kenya Independence Ceremonies, and I'm just summing up or coming to a close of the story. Um, G. Men and Williams, Under Secretary of State for African Affairs, also traveled to Kenya in December 63, and his role helped us to see that this entire narrative plays out on a Cold War stage. December 1963 was a difficult time for American diplomats in what had been a very difficult year. In December, they were spending much time reassuring the world in the wake of the Kennedy assassination. Because race in America had become such an important world story after the events in Birmingham in 63 and other, um, other uh, tragedies that year, um, and because Kennedy's new civil rights stance had been so important to helping to restore the U.S. international image, President Lyndon Baines Johnson reassured the world not only that the United States would stay on track and maintain Kennedy's foreign policy, um, but also would carry through in what he now characterized as Kennedy's civil rights policy. Um, so he, by, to reassure the world about American stability after the assassination, uh, what he talked about was getting through Kennedy's civil rights bill. This was the message that G. Men and William took to Nairobi in December 1963. And his brief address wrapped together the challenge of race in America and the challenge of race in Kenya, which was a story that in Frederick Marshall's ninth of July visit. But the way that Men and Williams cast it, both nations faced challenges. Both nations strove to move forward. It went without saying that discrimination continued in both countries. Williams was not there to point fingers, and he was certainly in no mood to have them point criticism pointed his way. By wrapping together the issue of race in both countries, Williams creates a buffer against criticism of American civil rights problems, at least from the new Kenya government. Human rights problems would continue to plague both Kenya and um, the United States. Uh, Kenyatta and American leaders would continue to talk about it, but their Cold War alliance um, would not be derailed by the problem.